lots of blood. And so obviously you've got to have some place where you can clean up. Inside the tent, um, there is on this side a uh, little table where they put fresh bread every day. Bread is important in the worship of God. And if you know what I'm talking about, you are a Christian. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> on this side, there's a candlestick because it gets dark in there. <laughs> That's true. It does get dark. <laughs> um, and right in front of the curtain, there's a tiny little golden altar that you burn incense on. Because it smells good. Here it's failing, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Inside this back room, behind that curtain, there's a golden box. The Indiana Jones will find you. This golden box with rings on the side. It's the ark. Um, different traditions in the Bible think that the ark looks different. Um, the way, traditional way in which you think that the ark looks is based on um, the end of Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers. Uh, Deuteronomy is going to have a very different tradition about what that box looks like. Um, on the top of that box are two creatures. Oh, you know about these cherubim, mm -hmm. the cherubs, um, which aren't flying babies. They're the scary things that God puts outside the garden to right? so you see them and you run away. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where the wild things are. <laughs> That's on top. And the reason why is because it's a very scary thing. You don't want to get near that. Bad things happen when you get near that. That's the reason why there's a curtain. So, kind of like radioactive sign right here. Um, and that's what the, how the tabernacle is sort of lined up. Uh, this is the courtyard. Right here is called the holy place. It is. Um, and here is called the holy of holies, right? Because in Hebrew, whenever you want to emphasize something, you say the word twice, right? There's a really, really great song in the Bible. It's called... <laughs> song of... Songs. Okay, there you go. Excellent. Yeah, Song of Songs um, is in the title. And it's a really great one. Of course it is, because the title says so. Um, so cool. So that's how it's organized. So we got a general courtyard, we have a holy place, and then we have a really holy place. And then we have outside the courtyard. And Israel dwells all around the tabernacle. So that, in fact, God actually does dwell in their midst. Uh, this, um, this golden box is actually God's throne. Um, it's not just a box that you keep the Ten Commandments in. It's actually God's throne. And the idea was that God actually actually is there. That God is actually there in a way that God is not present everywhere else. So I'm saying that God isn't everywhere else. But God is present here on the throne in a way that God is present anywhere else. Sound good? So that's the tabernacle. Cool. Questions, concerns, comments, very questions. And as, yeah? Uh, I'm just looking, is there a reason why you don't outline like a Why I don't, in, in my outline? Yes. I don't know, what do I do? <laughs> 23 and 25. Oh, because that's, that's just the covenant. The reason why it goes to 24 is that's split It's not, if you go to the top, it's not the actual. That's the book of the covenant. Oh, yeah, it's the big 10 and the book of the covenant. So it just goes to 24. So starting in 25 is the instructions for the tabernacle. Yeah, it goes through basically 40. But that one, that's up. Oh, what do you need? You need one of those? Fancy one? Oh, you want one of those too? Mm -hmm. Am I doing? <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Sound good? Thank you. Excellent. Um, let's go to Leviticus. Before we deal with Leviticus, I want to provide some sort of theoretical foundation. And it's a theoretical, it's not particularly complicated, um, because it's something we've been dealing with ever since Genesis 1 1. However, it's something that's been, let's just say, assumed um, that we haven't really made much of um, a deal about. Because the assumption sometimes is the same assumption we have. Here's the basic premise. Pay attention. This is kind of important. Not because it's going to appear on the final exam, but because it actually is kind of important when dealing with the Bible. The Bible never argues 
what it assumes. People that are agnostic, people that don't know whether they believe in God or not, I'm not sure if there's a God or not. And so what they do is if they go to the Bible to find, try to find out how the Bible argues that there is a God. And it doesn't. Anywhere. There's no argument that there's a God anywhere in the Bible. Because that's just assumed. Now then, once we have that assumption, then we can make certain arguments that go from that. But we never argue in the Bible what we assume. So far, so good? Um, again, just going all the way back to nearly the beginning of the course. Um, if you look outside, I can see it right there. There's a blue thing above the trees, right? The rakia, right? It's a hard, flat, firm thing that holds water off of us, right? Um, does the Bible ever argue that that's what it is? No. It just assumes that that's what the blue thing is. It's a hard, flat, firm thing that holds water up of us. There's a ton of water up there. If you don't believe me, ask Noah, right? Uh, there's a ton of water up there. Um, do we think it's a hard, flat, firm thing that holds water up us? No. We don't. We have a different presupposition about what that is, right? But the Bible assumes that that's what it is, and therefore, because that's what it assumes, it makes certain arguments from that, and that is, where did that come from? God. So far, so good? You see what, you see how it's working, right? Um, there's a lot of things that, right? There's a lot of things that we assume that the Bible doesn't assume. And there's a lot of things the Bible assumes that we don't assume. Get used to it. <laughs> right? I mean, it's written 2,500 years ago. Um, so, but the fact of the matter is, is that the Bible never argues what it, the, the argument, the point of the Bible is never what it's assuming. It's what it's arguing. So far, so good? Okay. So then, if we do not share the same presuppositions about several things, perhaps even many things, not all things, I think there's a God. I really do. I know it's shocking, isn't it? Um, I really do. I really do. The Bible assumes that there's a God. Um, and so, I mean, some presuppositions we perhaps share, um, but there's a lot of presuppositions we don't. And so if there are presuppositions that the Bible has that we don't share, what in the hell is good with it? Why do we have it? Right? And here's where I think we, why we have it, even though the presuppositions are different. When my son, my son is named Noah, he's now a sophomore, actually, and if I do a rock, I could probably hit him over at Meadows if I threw really hard. <laughs> um, when, but when he was very small, when he was in, I think it was fourth grade, uh, we got a letter from his school, Prestonwood Elementary, we got a letter from his school saying, you know, this kid's kind of smart. And he is. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Um, he's a teenager. Um, but um, he's pretty smart. Uh, we would like to sign him up for PACE, P-A-C-E, which stands for, I don't remember, because I'm not smart, that is. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, it's like a gifted, talented program thing, right? And so what he would do is stay after school for like an hour, hour and a half, and they do fun intellectual games that I didn't understand. So, make sense? Cool. One of the things that he would do in pace after school is what's called analogies. And an analogy works like this. I'm not even going to say anything. An analogy works like this. You get the piece of paper. Fill in the blank. Cool? Mm -hmm. Right, so what goes in the blank? Sure. This is the way it works. For me at least, and the way, reason why it's applicable to us. This is what the Bible assumes. This is what the Bible does with those assumptions and arguing. These are our assumptions about the way the world works. 
And therefore, what goes in the blank is a big square because the Bible says it. <laughs> no. The way it works is that these are our presuppositions. And we can do whatever the hell we want because we're postmodern. <laughs> no. You see, this is actually important. This is actually vital to knowing what our response should be. Even though the presuppositions are different, but the way in which the argument goes from those presuppositions to their results. Ah! Big fish. That's how we argue. That's how we understand the truth. Sound good? Cool. How do we know what presuppositions are right? We don't. Kind of the nature of presuppositions. It's the pre part. Right? Um, and we all have them, and we all deal with them, and sometimes we disagree about them, but we can't get rid of them, and we can't get outside them to look at them. <clears throat> the only way that we can deal with them very often is by talking to somebody else that has different presuppositions. Sound good? It's kind of theoretical. You'll, you'll wake up at 2 a.m., kick the covers off, and say, oh, that's brilliant! <laughs> <laughs> because it is. <laughs> but it seems to me, as we're reading the Bible, and the way in which these stories are working on us, and don't you doubt that these stories have been working on us. As we've been reading these stories, and they have been working on us, it seems to me that this is the way they work. And this is also the reason why I hate memory verses. <laughs> Because all memory verses is just reading <clears throat> instead of understanding. Yeah. Sound good? Mm -hmm. yeah. Questions, concerns, comments, very donations like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is the word that, they, that people are actually translating as commandments? Because I remember you said that there is no word for co but commandments. Is not in there. The, there is there is a word for commandments, and yes. it's mitzvah. Yes. But it's not used with the ten. Yes. Right. And so the word that's used for the ten is word. Word. God spoke these words. Word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's just a plain old word, which for me at least. Um, anybody have New Testament, Greekish, right? The logos, mm -hmm. sort of the understanding, the concept. Of, for me at least, that's the way the Ten Commandments work, and that is they're not things. You don't wake up in the morning and say, well, that's right, I can't commit adultery today. <laughs> right? It's not like things that you check off a list. It's foundational <coughs> understandings about the way in which society should work. Right? <coughs> and yet again, I mean, sort of going with my point, the Bible never argues that you shouldn't murder. It just assumes you shouldn't murder. <laughs> As most societies assume that. So. Yeah. Sound good? Yes. Okay, cool. All that out of the way. How are we doing? Good. That's not, this won't take too long. We may get over it. Um, <coughs> This is what I want you to do. I want you to put your pencils down, papers down. I want you to look up at me finally, because I'm the point. <laughs> I want you to look around the room and tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. What do you see? People? people? You see people. Yes. Good. Good. Excellent. Tell me something else you see. Windows. Windows. Light. Wait, 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 wait. Yep, windows, cool. Uh, lights? Beautiful. Yes, lights. Tell me something else. Walls. Light blue shirts. Walls, yes. Oh, good. Something else? Shirts. Doors. Huh? Shirts. Shirts. Blue ones. Somebody got a shirt just like you on. Shirts. <laughs> yes, it seems as though we have shirts. Something else? Doors. Yes, good. Yeah, doors. 
something else. Attitudes. Hmm? Smiles. Smiles. <laughs> well, sometimes. Let's do this group. Yeah, cool. Something else. Speakers. Speakers. Yes, we have speakers. I don't know about that. What are they? They are speakers. Okay. But I can't say okay. Okay. Please. Give me something else. Buckets. 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 Buckets? Pockets. Oh, pockets! Uh, I thought you said buckets. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it could function as a bucket. But anyway, that's not a quick idea. Yes, pockets, and at least these are okay. I don't know about y'all's, but yes, I think these are okay. Something else? Chairs. Chairs. I see pop, plushy pop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something else? I'm not. I'm not looking for anything. So I'm not. It's not bald and balding. So far, it's perfectly fine. Anything else? Bald and balding. What? Bald and balding heads. Bald heads. <laughs> oh, balding. that's kind of big in Leviticus, actually. <laughs> um, and yes, at least uh, I'm not going to look. Um, at least the ones that I see. Yes, they are. They are. That's good. They're good. Um, markers. Let me sit up in there. Podium. Okay. Podium. Yes. Podium. The desk. Tables. Desks. Books. Yes. Hmm? Computers. Books. Yes. Yes, that's good. Cool. Awesome. The point here is, is that everything that you've mentioned, the possible, and again, I'm not saying it isn't, but I don't know about the speakers, the marker, but practically everything that we've mentioned conforms to the purpose for which it was made. It does what it's supposed to do. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything, when was this? This was uh, two or three years ago. Um, somebody, the, the shades were halfway down. We tried to bring them all the way down, and it didn't work so well. That's not good, right? That's um, broken, right? It doesn't conform, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It doesn't conform to the purpose for which it was made. So far, so good? good. But you notice that practically everything we said, practically everything we said, I don't know about the projector. Again, I have to hook up the speakers to see if they conform to the purpose for which they made. Maybe they're just boxes on the wall. I don't know. You can't tell by looking because a speaker isn't about what it looks like. A speaker is about what it sounds like. So far, so good? Cool. Practically everything that we see in this classroom conforms to the purpose for which it was made. Practically everything in this world conforms to the purpose for which it was made. In Leviticus, that state of being, of conforming to the purpose for which it was made, doing what it's supposed to do, is a technical term. And as with most technical terms, it doesn't really mean what it means. You have to sort of, it's like, it's like, it's like a, 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 a shortcut. It's like a, an abbreviation. In Leviticus, if something conforms to the purpose for which it was made, it's called clean. That's what Leviticus is going to call it, clean. And again, it doesn't mean that it's washed. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have dirt on it. it. Dirt conforms to the purpose for which it was made. It does what dirt is supposed to do. And therefore, in a funny sort of sense, dirt is clean, right? Because it does what it's supposed to do, unless it doesn't. Uh, but almost everything in creation conforms to the purpose for which it was made. 